Hello, this is Armin with Open Source RF, and this is a circuit review of the RGB LED and button shield. Here's a 3D picture of the shield, and the shield plugs directly onto the top of the RF Duino. Here's a picture of the shield itself, uh, which is our prototype, and also a picture of it plugged onto the RF Duino along with a CR2032 battery and a solderless breadboard. Here's the overall schematic of the RGB and button shield, and we're going to move into the individual sections now. Here are the pin locations it occupies on the RF Duino footprint. As you can see, you have three pins for blue, green, and red, and you have two pins occupied for button one and two. There are a total of seven GPIO on the RF Duino, of which this device will use five. Looking at the individual button circuits, uh, all you have over here are the two buttons, um, button one and button two. You have a 10K pull down with a um, push button up to VCC, which is uh, three volts or 3.3 volts in this case. And also we have a 220 ohm resistor in series with um, the RF Duino controller pin. The reason for the 220 ohm series resistor is just in case if your code tells it to drive as an output rather than set up as an input by mistake, um, that'll protect uh, the chip and as well the battery or whatever power source you're using. What's actually nice about uh, the 10K pull down uh, along with the 220 ohm in series is if you choose not to use these two buttons and free up two more GPIOs for your applications, out of the seven GPIO, three of them will be used for the RGB LED and four of them would still be available for other uh, devices. Now, by having only a 10K pull down here, if you're running at 3 volts, you'll only end up having uh, about a 300 microamp load on each one of the pins if you chose to drive them high. So uh, they could almost be transparent to the rest of your circuit. Of course, if you happen to be running on a CR2032 battery, you won't want to leave it high all the time because it'll drain the battery. So then you probably wouldn't be driving a LED on constantly anyway in that type of application. So that should also be well suited for most type of battery applications. For something like this, when you're driving this LED, you probably want to wind up using the AA battery or dual AA or some other external power source uh, because um, the LEDs, of course, do draw current. Although you can still run off of the CR2032 battery. Uh, that'll still do pretty well for you, but uh, those things will drain pretty quickly because they're really made far more for intermittent application rather than constant on applications. And there is a complete view of button two as well. Now we're on to the LED, and that's pretty straightforward. Uh, three 220 ohm resistors in series for the current limiting resistor from three volts down to the uh, forward bias voltage of the individual uh, blue, green, and red LEDs. Uh, we happen to have chosen a uh, surface mount LED for this particular board. Uh, however, if you choose to want to drive some external LEDs, you can definitely do so. Simply just unplug this board and, um, and select these three GPIO or any other GPIO, and you can drive uh, PWM into any RGB LED. And that concludes our RGB LED and button shield circuit review. If you have any questions, as always, let us know. We're always happy to answer. Thank you for watching.